let's talk about the Big 12. Um, let me ask you something about Big 12 football. Can the Big 12 win big games? Because I, I don't think any of us question the impact that this football season is going to have. And if you look at some of these games and you look at the teams that are projected to, to end up at the top of the table in the Big 12 this football season, there is no question that the Utahs, the K-States, the Kansases, the Iowa States, and I think Iowa State's way under the radar, but I think Iowa State's critically important. Um, obviously, if you look at the state of Texas, I think TCU and Texas Tech are important. Uh, Oakey Light, depending on which corner of the country you're in. Um, there are some teams in this league that I think, without question, have to win nine or 10 games to make this season viable for the Big 12. And with all of this seeming pressure, with all of the the conversations about the Big 12 and its financial instability and can it survive, which again, I think is complete garbage. But here we are in, in 2024 and it seems like everything, again, is a conspiracy theory and the Big 12 is failing, they're not. I think this football season is critically important. The Big 12 has to get, in my opinion, at least three teams into the college football playoff. But can they do that? Does this league have three of the top 12 teams in the country? Can they do it? Can they have a presence? And I'll be honest with you, sitting here last night and this morning looking at schedules, I don't know the answer to that question. And we got some kickoff times that we're going to talk about here in a minute. But do you believe in the teams in this league? And Jake, I think, again, and I know that we are – Already probably pointing this show right at Oak State, James. Bet you weren't expecting this one. But again, I think Oklahoma State sits right in the crosshairs of this conversation because if Oklahoma State doesn't make the college football playoff, I think this league is going to struggle. Well, and I don't think there's another team outside of Utah that you can you can expect to make the college football playoff in the Big 12. Now, are there teams that could overachieve and get in? Absolutely. You know, but I think that there's a lot of a lot of question marks around, you know, just like you said, like, you know, K-State, Kansas, um, obviously Tech is is a huge question mark. Uh, I think Dion in Colorado, nobody is sure what, um, you know, what that's going to look like. We know it's going to be better, but we don't know how far that jump's going to be. We know that he's recruited in the trenches, but just how good can you be? So with all those question marks, Utah and, and Oklahoma State, obviously remain the two that you have to have. And that's why um, I, I, I think that, you know, Gundy and, and his program need to come through. It, it, this is not, it's not going to be good enough to have eight wins. And I think that I would say the same thing for Cam Rising and Brand Keithy. It's not going to be good enough to play four games and you're out for the season. That's not going to work anymore. I, I, I'm I'm I, I'm pointing this at Utah fan, man. Like I'm tired of hearing about how Cam Rising and Brant Keithy are these all American players who are amazing and everything's awesome, but they're never available and don't win big bowl games. Like I'm tired of that. Like it's time to come through. It's time to step up and show that you can stay healthy. And I love them. I love them. I love yeah. their game. I love what they're capable of doing, but but there is no getting around it. Like the Big 12 needs Utah and Oklahoma State to be as reliable as possible. And then you need somebody to come out of the woodwork the way TCU did several years ago and be way better than anybody thought you were going to be. Well, and I, I continue to I continue to point it at Oak State because I look at this graphic right here. And that October 18th game. That is at BYU. That's 815 Mountain, 915 Central. I think that's one of the most difficult games of the year. And I, I think if you if you look at the Arkansas game, notice the kickoff time on that game. It's 11 a.m. Central. Tulsa, notice the kickoff time on that game. It's 11 a.m. Central. At BYU on a Friday night, at 9.15 Central. At that's 4, where 4,000 feet. Yeah, that's where seasons go to die. Yeah. You cannot lose that game. And I think that is one of those games where when we look at, ultimately, when we look at Oak State and we look at their schedule in totality, obviously, 
The Arkansas game, huge game. But when is that game? 10 a.m. Right. Mountain, 11 a.m. Central Time. Right? And that game's in Stillwater. I I look at the Utah game. To be determined. That's going to be a national TV game. Oklahoma State and Utah is a preview of the Big 12 championship game in some people's opinions. Yeah. That's going to be a national TV game. That BYU game, that's a huge game. Notice we didn't get TCU and Tech kickoff times for Oak State. We will. Notice at Colorado. And Colorado is a critically important part of this conversation about, about the Big 12 winning games and, and being a prominent player this year. I look at things like Oak State at Colorado. That's a 10 a.m. kickoff for Colorado. You better win that game. And Mike Gundy has talked about he does not like nighttime football. Mike Gundy likes 11 a.m. kickoffs. Mm -hmm. And then you go to Provo on a Friday night to die. You go to the mountains and you die. If you don't win that game, you likely do not play for a conference championship. Well, and if you look at their schedule in totality, I mean, where where does that 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 game is right in the middle, is it not? If I remember correctly, BYU is yeah. is October eighteenth, right right in the meat of your schedule. So I mean, you you look at the schedule and 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 you know if we go worst case scenario, you lost to Utah, uh, maybe you know at West Virginia. Uh, that, that, that West Virginia's in Stillwater. Oh, it's in Stillwater. So yeah, I mean, their schedule, their schedule comes down to that stretch of four games. Yeah, Utah at K State, West Virginia at BYU. Yeah, and then you got to finish, which with four games that I think are going to be real ball busters because I think Arizona State's going to be a very much a try hard team. They're not going to lay down. So you've got to go Arizona State at TCU. Tech at home and then at Colorado. I mean, say that, you know, if we if we assume, you know, and I'm not saying it's going to happen, but if just for example's sake, let's say Colorado's a seven, eight win team instead of a four win team. All of a sudden that that becomes a losable game at the end of your schedule. Now, they'll probably beat Colorado, let's be honest. They probably will. You would you would certainly expect them to. You uh, would certainly uh, expect them to. But, you know, you think about, hey, we've had to grind through this football schedule. And if we go off of last year's behavior, let's say you drop a game in your first four that you shouldn't drop. You know, let's say you have a bad outing. You know, you have the the Will Howard game against Oklahoma State where he throws four interceptions uncharacteristically. Let's say Bowman does that and just throws one away. You can't have that this year. And that's no, kind of cannot. my point with, with, with Gundy and Oklahoma State. It's not so much that about like, hey, it's not the conversation we've been having of like, have they lived up to it or not? This is more about like, hey, we're in a season where there's a lot of change happening in college football. There's a lot of uh, a lot of stuff at play, NIL, portal, lawsuits. Like there's all this stuff happening. And all we're asking Mike Gundy to do is go out and win 10 games. That's all I need you to do. Go out, win 10 games, win the conference, yeah, and do your I, thing. I, but I, I think it is, I think it's more than that. I think that, again, Oak State James wants to DM me on Instagram and tell me, like, th this is the problem with Oklahoma State fan. And we've talked about this ad nauseum. Everybody wants to talk about um, the fact that, you know, you, Gundy is a loyal puppy. It, he's not great. He's loyal. So what is it? What is it? If Mike Gundy doesn't win 10 games this year, what is your excuse going to be? Or what's the narrative that's going to make you feel better about it? Because I I, I, I got to be honest with you, looking at the the projections, if you look at the, the boys in Vegas and where they have this league right now, there is no doubt, there is no doubt that Oklahoma State at seven and a half, that's their over-under. That is... So... Yeah. When all of you Okie State fans are in the fucking comments section losing your mind telling me that I don't know what I'm talking about. And have you <laughs> yesterday, yesterday, it, Rodrigo or whatever the guy's name was, I think it was Rodrigo actually, telling me, have you studied our roster uh, and our depth chart? Watch Oklahoma State games, man. Like uh, trying to go deep and saying, this is an undefeated Oklahoma State roster. They're projected to win seven and a half games. <laughs> And I, granted, I'm taking the over on that. I'm a man. But do you guys understand the under is one minus 150?
There's not a whole lot of confidence, right? And I understand that you've got Ollie Gordon. But if you're standing on business with Alan Bowman, you better take the under on seven and a half. Yeah. You, you better take the under. And, and I look at some of the numbers in this conference, TCU seven and a half, Texas Tech seven and a half, UCF seven and a half. Is that who we're really playing with at, o at Oklahoma State? That's who we're talking about. You're in that same pool. Meantime, Utah's nine and a half. Right. And nine why, and why, a half. Why is that? And the overs plus 108. And, and why is that? Because Kyle Whittingham has built expectation in his program. Right? And he has his deepest quarterback room ever. Ever. With, you look at Heward and Wilson backing up Cam Rising, who has had a year off and quite legitimately, I think he's a seventh year senior. And now you start to understand why this team is so heavily favored in this league. Yet you're asking me if I study the, the depth chart at <laughs> Oklahoma state, have you looked at what Kyle Whittingham's got on defense? Yeah. I don't think Come it should now. be. Uh, uh, and again, you know, this is what, this is where we part company with, you know, the Okie fans. Uh, I don't think it should be celebrated that you've got 20 of 22 back or whatever it is, you know, for returning starters. Like, like I'm telling you right now that having your starters back is cool. That's okay. Great. You have some experience there. Like, okay, cool. But those players in that roster didn't do anything for you last year. You got to the championship game and got beat. And do I think a Utah Oklahoma State championship game in the Big 12 would probably be more competitive than it oh. was against Texas? Yeah, probably, but the problem with that is is that Utah de Utah's defense is world class, right? You, you I would I would take Utah's defense against pretty much every team in the country except for maybe 3 or 4. Like that's how good they are, man. Yeah, they are that I, good. I think it's it's going to be a compelling year, and I, I I one of the questions I'd love to get going in the comments section: Who's the dark horse in this league? Because I don't know that you can say that Kansas is a dark horse, but I think Kansas is going to be very good. I think that when you look at some of the some of the things that Kansas has done, um, their number is eight and a half for a reason, mm -hmm. and the fact that you have Jalen Daniels back. Um, I think that you're going to have to figure out, uh, how to replace Coddle Nikki. Obviously that's a, a big deal for, for, um, you lose your offensive guru. That's a big deal. But when you have Jalen Daniels and who knows if he can stay healthy, I pretty much missed all of last year. If he stays healthy, that kid's a difference maker. And I think Kansas can be very good. Again, I'll, I'll sit here and tell you, I think Iowa State is going to continue to be overlooked. Like, do you see what I mean? Iowa State's number is the same as Oklahoma State's number. And they have Rocco Becht. Like, <laughs> that, that's what I'm Yet saying. they're like, at I, seven and a half. I, I, I'm telling you, a lot, of, a lot of the numbers come down to perception versus what you actually did on the field. So what I mean is like, Oklahoma State being at seven and a half does feel a bit light, but people don't believe in what's happening there. You haven't shown that year in and year out, you can go out and compete for that conference. And I think that people feel like, hey, you went to the championship game last year. Is this the step back year? Is this, you know, our last year, you know, you win however many you won. Is this year going to be a seven win year, an eight win year? Like we've seen Gundy do so many times to Oak State James point, right? Because that's the point. That's what that's what Oklahoma State fan and and Oklahoma State country are going to tell you. Hey, this guy's the pinnacle of of having a winning record. Hey, we're going to win eight nine games every single year, and that's going to be kind of our thing. But the problem with that is, is eight nine mm. wins this year isn't going to do anything for you. You're not in the playoff at that point. Uh, you you obviously have not won your conference at that point. Um, you know you're you're probably in just a mid level bowl game at that point. Like, you're not doing anything. So if this conference comes down to Utah and, I don't know, uh, let's call it, what, Kansas at eight and a half, I think we just said? That's crazy to me. You can't have that. What you need is Utah, Kansas, 
Oklahoma State, and then you need Colorado to just be relevant. Not not a nine-win team, Colorado. Just no. be relevant. Just be that team in the conference that's a pain in the ass and wins a couple games this year that you shouldn't win. That's all you got to have. Because I can't see West Virginia winning nine games again. I can't see... Like, K-State's very interesting. I think... I think K-State is a fascinating, fascinating team to watch this year. Vegas has them at nine and a half, K-State. And obviously, Chris Kleiman is a wizard. You turned over a lot of that offense. And you look at Avery Johnson, and I understand that Avery Johnson is arguably one of the best dual threat young guys in the country. Stay hard. Totally understand that. A hundred percent. I understand that. But I look at some of these numbers and I say nine and a half. I mean, if nine and if they win 10 games, Manhattan will burn. Like I, what, what yeah. is the party like after they win their 10th game? So let's say it happens. Let, let's say that, you know, K-State's got, you know, let's say they're, they're 10 wins. Okay. That definitely means that teams like Oklahoma State are not 10 wins then. If 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 K-State's winning 10 games, they're beating people they should not beat. And are you really going to do that with Connor Riley taking over the offense? And I mean, obviously it's, it's an aggressive number. I mean, I I think it's a very aggressive oh, yeah. number. You're you're yeah. you're losing a guy in Colin Klein that a lot of people believed was a driver. Obviously, he had to be a driver, but with with an offensive line coach taking over your offense. Yeah. Are we are we really gonna like that's I think K State's number is very lofty, but but to the original question of can you can you expect three teams in the college football playoff? I would tell you right now, I I I don't think the bottom half of this conference all of a sudden takes some huge leap. But if you look at Utah, I would fully expect Kansas to be in the the conference championship equation. I mean, of the teams that you look at in this conference, Utah. I mean, with Ollie Gordon there, I think you have to say have Oklahoma to. State. You have to. I think you have to say Kansas. Yes. And then that that fourth or fifth team, like it's K State. I think it's K State. Like, but how do you not say Iowa State? Uh, that defense is unbelievable. Yeah. Is I. I how is Iowa State, if Iowa State does not find itself in, in a in a November game of heat, right? Uh, where, holy shit, if we win this game, we could, if, if we win, if we beat, if we, if we go to Salt Lake City and we can find a way to beat Utah at Rice Eccles Stadium, which granted, good luck. I'd rather chop off my toes than try to beat Kyle Whittingham at home in November. All gas, no break. That is an awfully big ask. But if they win that game, are you telling me? I mean, they're in. They're 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 in the conversation. The problem is, has anybody looked at the schedule for Iowa State? Sure, North Dakota, Iowa's at Iowa is never going to be that. That game is always you never know. Unbelievable. Yeah, Arkansas State. What is Willie Fritz got at Houston? Who here is a Houston believer? At the bottom of the board in this conference, obviously you find yourself talking about BYU, Cincinnati, Houston. What what is what is Houston going to be this year? Cuz I'm not sure. I I I cannot sit here and say, is this a 7-win team or is this a 3-win team? I think that's a huge question. Well, and and the other thing, you know, when I think about Houston and I think about them moving on from Dana, like you, you, you that program, you know, it's always about how many games you win, of course, right? Like obviously that's the easy measuring stick for a program like Houston, but but for mm. Houston this year, I, I think it's more about, you know, are you being playing more competitive football? Like last year and and the the couple of seasons Dana was there, it they it just didn't pan. It just didn't feel like Houston was like this team that really had a great shot. Like they were in some games, but you always felt like, yeah, they're going to find a way to mess this up or like they're not really going to be a threat. Like they were just that team that you knew wasn't going to do a whole lot. And like I say about any conference, 
in in college football. The bottom end of your 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 conference has to um you know has to put out they, they they have to be they have to be good enough to challenge the top teams in in the football game. They may not win those games, but you need to be good enough to push those teams because ultimately when Buddy, the the AP voter, is is on the East Coast or covering MLS in Minnesota, and they watch Sports Center and see all the highlights. They're gonna want to see a big play to win a game in a clutch moment, and that's what your bad teams can provide you in a conference. Like you know, one of those big moments. Yeah, well, they miss the biggest brands in the conference. There's there's no doubt about that. When you don't have to play Oklahoma State, Texas Tech, West Virginia, I mean, that is huge. That's huge. And I think their their number, I think, is four and a half in Vegas. It doesn't help that you start with a primetime game against UNLV. That's not ideal. We're going to find out real quick. And, I, I mean, obviously, you get a break when you go um, to Oklahoma in week two. <laughs> <laughs> Hi. Uh, but then you get Rice, in, in, Rice at home at Cincinnati. Those are two games that you're going to be in. You're probably going to beat Rice. Uh, but then Iowa State at TCU, at Kansas, Utah, K-State, at Arizona, Baylor, and you finish so, at BYU. So for Houston, this is exactly what I'm saying. But you miss the toughest brands in the conference, arguably, yet you have one of the most difficult conference schedules, I think, of anyone. So you don't win a game till week three. Let's assume you're zero and two. You're zero and two. So then you're one and two, and then you're probably not going to win another game until you get to the back quarter of your yeah. of your uh, of your season. And I and that's what I'm saying. the The win loss number for Houston is not one that I would be trifling with. If you like to have some some money on this stuff, I would I would stay away from that. I would more be on in the because the Big Twelve has always been, at least in my time watching college football, a, a, a chaotic conference on the field. You, there are just some games you never know what you're going to get. And Houston, and Texas last year. Houston, Houston Texas, almost beat Texas right? like, last see, year. That's exactly what I'm saying, right? Like, Texas is this juggernaut last year, yeah. and they had this adventure against Houston. And, and that's why I say I just think for Houston, it's not about the win-loss total per se. It's about, hey – Against Utah, are we in that game, or is that like a is that a we lost by four possessions in the first half and we're never in it? Like I want and need Houston to be better. I want and need UCF to be better. Now it would help if if you know you know UCF's quarterback could stay healthy and they could stay healthy and well, compete. But you know that'd be ideal. You know, like like BYU, right? Need we 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 need Jake Retzloff to come out and have a year. We need. Kalani and that defense to have a year. And that's why I'm saying there's big upside potential in the Big 12. There's a lot of brands in this conference that could be five, six win good. There are. But it could also be, hey, huge letdown. Uh, you know, uh Daniels at yeah. K State gets or at Kansas gets hurt. Uh, you know, the K-State offense doesn't come through in year one after Will Howard. Alan Bowman gets hurt early in the year and they're playing with a backup and Ollie Gordon. It helps. Utah, Cam Rising, the knee lets him down, and he's off the, to the knee. The knee lets him down. Like, but you see what I'm saying? Like, there's a lot of it's a very volatile. Volatile yeah. might be the best way to describe the Big 12. It could be a great year, and a lot of teams overachieve, and everything's awesome. But it could also be a really bad year. And I think that the SEC and the Big Ten don't deal with this because they have the top tier brands in the 100%. country. So they have that built-in reliability. But the Big 12 doesn't necessarily have that right now, which again brings us back to the beginning of the conversation, which is you need Utah and Oklahoma State to be reliable. And whatever you get after that is, is a cherry on top. Totally agree. This hour of the show presented by Milwaukee Tools. Proud to have Milwaukee Tools on board the show this hour. Uh, you guys are celebrating 100 years at Milwaukee Tools, and they say they're just getting started. It is Father's Day. Give the gift of Milwaukee Tools to your dad. It's what he wants, right? You look in the uh, you look in the tags below, you'll see right there that there's a tray that shows all the Milwaukee Tools. You guys, they have great combo kit deals for you. Save $30 uh, on their Milwaukee uh, M18 cordless lithium two-tool combo kit. All of the things that dad wants for Father's Day, they're tagged right below. Click on those. 
hook your dad up. Milwaukee Tools celebrating 100 years in the business. Got to love Milwaukee Tools. You know what it is with Milwaukee. It's always quality. Uh, you can rely you can rely on their durability, their longevity. You invest in a Milwaukee tool, you can be confident that your dollar is well spent because those tools are going to be in your family for a decade. That's what you count on at Milwaukee Tools. It's what's powered Milwaukee for 100 years and hopefully 100 more. This hour of the show brought to you by Milwaukee Tools. Let's get into the comments section here on the Monty Show. Um, the sleepers. Right now, in the comments section, who's the sleeper? Colorado. You think it's Colorado? I think, I think that Colorado Colorado is not going to be in the win the conference conversation, right? They're not that Okay. Good, no, they're not. I think that Colorado can be the end your season team. I think that if you look at Colorado's schedule mm -hmm. uh, and when the big games um, you know, show up for them, uh, if that if they are better in the trenches as the portal and as the hype says, if they actually have a reasonable offensive line and they're able to stop the run on defense with their defensive line, I think Colorado is, could potentially be good enough to have a seven-win season, which I think would be a tremendous improvement um, in mm. in year two of the Dion experience. And I know everyone hates on Dion. I'm not saying they're the best thing since sliced well, fine, bread. Fine bomb went after him the other day. Yeah, but 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 I think that I, I I'm telling you. Dion understands the expectations and what needs to take place this year. And I do think he he sees just how damn good Shador is. Like, And if you didn't, haven't watched Shador and you don't understand his skill set, he has a cannon. He has a great feel and great he'll, touch. He'll on be the ball, one dude. of the top quarterbacks off the board a year from now. Yeah, he'll be in the Heisman conversation, I would guess. Like, he'll, like, if, if all things go as they should, I like Colorado to be a dark horse to go out and be the season wrecker in the Big 12 for the big boys. Yeah, I think there's no reason to believe, you know, based on, you know, the portal, uh, based on the recruiting that they've done. Um, they s clearly lost some talent, but I also think they gained some talent. Mm -hmm. And I think their defensive and offensive line is is significantly better. Um, I think I would pick Houston, but I think Houston's schedule is just such a ball breaker. Um, and it's why I'm going to go with the boys and Ames. I think Iowa State is that team that nobody's talking about. Nobody wants to talk about. Totally agree. And I, I think, you know, and if we if we talk about if we talk about, you know, underdog, if I look at the projected win totals for Iowa State, seven and a half. And I, I, I'm sitting here looking at Iowa State's schedule. I think they start the year seven and zero, oh, and then you wind up with Tech because they're better than obviously North Dakota. They're better than Iowa, though that game's in Iowa City, so. But I think they win that game. Give it to them, yeah. They're better than Arkansas State. They're better than Houston. They're better than eight ball at Baylor. And I think <laughs> the real question is, does Neil Brown need fired at West Virginia? Because they got to go to Morgantown. <laughs> they got to go to Morgantown on, on October 12th. Yeah. They should be 6-0. and And then they get the great fortune of not going to the bounce house. UCF comes to Ames. I think they're 7-0 and going against Texas Tech. Again, it's November. It's in Iowa. I think they beat Tech. They're eight yeah, no. Call it eight no. First loss is Kansas. Kansas. They go to uh, they they go to Kansas, which it, obviously it's not Lawrence, but you're still playing a Kansas home game. Yeah. Cincinnati. That's a loss. They're they're yeah. nine and one against Cincinnati. They're nine and two after they lose in Salt Lake City, and then I think they they have the potential to win ten games if they can beat K State uh, in Ames to end the season. On November 30th. Yeah. I think Iowa State is that team that could find themselves in the conversation for a conference championship appearance if Mike Gundy falters. Because I I'll, I'll again, I think there is no doubt in 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 this observer's mind, Utah's got the path to the to the conference championship game pretty well laid out. Mm -hmm. Because you look at this schedule for Jetta. The Utah Jits, yeah. Uh, Southern Utah, eight ball in Salt Lake City, uh, at Utah State. Aggie tears. They're three and zero after the Aggie tears flow. 
and then you, you you go to stool water. So let's say let's let's say they beat Okie State. So you're four zero. Do you fire Mike Gundy that night? No, I'm kidding. It's, it's, yeah. it's more that he's dude. You need to understand, dude. He's more, not going to get fired unless he shaves his head. It's more. It's more hyper, but I, I mean, it, it'd be different if Mike Gundy had a lot of resources and money. Um, oh wait, he does. That's right. I mean, if if Mike Gundy it turned into you know Mike Eight Ball Gundy, then I think he's in danger of being fired. Do you but... force him to shave his head if he loses to Kyle Whittingham in Stillwater? And who is going to do the wellness check on Oak State James if they lose <laughs> that game? <laughs> because Alan Bowman, again. I understand that he's no, he, no, I'm not going to, I'm not no going to make no Rudolph jokes. Brandon Whedon, but he'll do. Uh, at Arizona, I think they are five and oh, or for, home for Arizona. I think they're five. No, although the fighting Fafitas, people have them winning eight games. Yeah. You're going to have to prove that they're five and oh, at Arizona state, they're six and oh, TCU at Salt Lake city, seven and oh, at Houston, eight, eight no. The BYU game is a toss-up. It's so at say, Rice Eccles. Let's say they lose that game just for just for conversation. Eight and one. Sake. Eight and one. At Colorado. You got to give it to them. I can't see them losing to Colorado. I just can't. Nine and one. Iowa State. Okay. Ten and one. No, let's say they lose to Iowa State. They're not going to lose to Iowa State. Ten and one. At UCF is the game that scares me on their schedule. So how are you going to say Iowa State's a, uh, a dark horse to win 10 and then say they're just going to auto-beat Iowa State? Because you don't come to, to Sac Lake City and expect to win games. Uh, you don't. I think you favor Utah in every home game. And if we're talking about are they going to win or are they going to lose, they're going to beat BYU and they're going to beat Iowa State. And that game at the bounce house, dude, your balls are going to be sweating. What and happens if Cam Rising gets hurt? Then, then, then what? They have depth, and I can't believe I'm going to say this out loud. They have depth. Yeah. I mean, Heward is a really nice pickup for Kyle Whittingham. And obviously, Isaac Wilson, you know, hot mom or not. <laughs> He's no Zach, but he'll do. I mean, <clears throat> you know. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, he has depth in the quarterback room for the first time in a very long time. Yeah. quality throw from the pocket depth. Now, Sam Heward, I don't, what is he? I have no idea. Mm -hmm. But what he is is a quarterback at Utah who has great potential. Isaac Wilson's clearly going to be the two here. Yeah. Cam Rising, I think, knows he's playing for his football future. I think he probably stays healthy. I think that that defense is elite. I don't see Utah losing at Rice, Rice Eccles Stadium this year. I don't. Um, I think your their home schedule is Southern Utah, eight ball from Waco, uh, Arizona, TCU, BYU, and Iowa State. And I don't know. I, I think that I don't know. I think that that Iowa State game is gonna be a fight. Don't fuck. I get it. It's at home. You think that's an auto win? I don't think that's an I auto win. I don't think there are there's no such thing in this conference as an auto win. But what does it what is Utah missing? that everybody else has really difficult, long stretches of ball breaking schedule. And you look, what's, what is their toughest stretch? Arguably it is Utah state at Utah state at Oak state, Arizona at Arizona state. I think that is their most difficult stretch because if we go past that TCU in Salt Lake city, difficult game, they're better than TCU. At Houston, BYU at Colorado. Those are, in my opinion, you, uh, BYU and Colorado are rivalry games. And you you finish that with Iowa State and UCF. If you value BYU and Colorado, that's a tough four-game stretch to end the season. But again, your two most difficult opponents are probably Iowa State and Oak State. You get Oak State early in the year, so let's say they lose to Oak State. They still have time to recover. That's a September loss. September losses generally aren't going to keep you out of the college football playoff, yeah. especially if you win the conference and you're in. Yeah, ask Alabama. So we're in this place where 
I think Utah is ideally set up with the schedule to win double digits. Potentially, this is a schedule, and I I, well, I don't mean Monty, to say it out loud. Monty, you're drinking the red Kool-Aid now. Come on. This is a schedule that Kyle Whittingham could go undefeated with. That's that's the the schedule sets up that way. Now, I think Brant Keithy has to be all American. He has to be an all American. He's too good. We need to see the top end of Brant Keithy at Utah. And if Cam's healthy, Brant Keithy's healthy, I don't see any reason this team can't be a one loss or an undefeated team. Mm-hmm. The defense, it's Kyle Whittingham. The defense is going to be phenomenal. This is a this is a schedule where my expectation is they're one loss or undefeated. And my expectation is is that Kyle Winningham is going to go into to Stillwater and stop the run and make Allen Bowman beat him. Mm-hmm. And good luck trying to beat Utah by throwing the football over the top. Now, graduation in the back end, absolutely that's true. But again, that defense is projected to be elite. So, yeah. They've got to stay healthy on offense and Brand Keithy. I think if Brand Keithy is everybody's all American, this team's undefeated. I, I agree that they they do have one of the easier schedules. The way it's built, who they're playing, when they play them. Like I Because think, you yeah. don't have the bullshit hanging over the Utes anymore. You don't have all this nonsense about when are we going to get Cam? Where's Brant? Like, who's this? It's very Your mom's simple. cousin. It's very simple. None of that. Cam Rising's the starting quarterback. Brand Keithy's ready to rock and roll. There's no controversy. There, there is. It's been a very quiet summer. Good. Which Good. is exactly what we all wanted. It's about time. Very quiet summer. Very quiet summer. And we had, I remember, you know, during this past season, we had people reach out to us and ask us, like, where is Brant Keithy? Like, obviously he's injured, but dudes, like, disappeared. When's he coming back? When's he going to play? Where's Cam Rising? Like, I'm telling you, I, I have no doubt that they're going to come out and ball out in the first quarter of the season. My, I don't have any only, doubt at all. My only doubt, or not even doubt, just question. Just, I'm just interested to see. Do they hold up? That's my only question. Because I, I will say, and again, they're young, right? Like, you would expect them to hold up. But when you haven't played a game in how long, you know, being in football shape is different than being in weight room shape is different than being on practice field. Right. So, you know, that first time you get popped, you know, I'm, you know, cam's a gamer. He's a dog. We all know that, but does he just pop back up or what's that look like? And and how is he affected? And that's the stuff I'm going to be looking for when, when I watch you because if you're, I don't care who you're a fan of in the big 12, right? Like if you're a tech fan, TCU fan, whoever, whoever's your team, the Utah Utes is a team that you want to watch. You want to find a way to catch some of their games, and you want to understand, okay, hey, like for Gundy Nation, you're going to want to watch some of the Utah games because you want to understand, hey, what do we need to do to compensate for this? Well, what did we talk about yesterday that lit Oklahoma State fans on fire? My Alan Bowman came out of the transfer part, all you prick. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Monty's a prick. We all agree with that. No, well, Monty's about Alan Bowman, okay? But what is is the biggest issue? If I said to you, what is Utah, what do we have to figure out on Utah's defense? Well, I don't think there's any doubt losing Cole Bishop. Vaki as well. Yeah. Because not. I I don't know that anybody appreciated Vaki's contribution outside of Salt Lake City, or excuse me, Sac Lake City. Right. But you went out and got Cameron Calhoun and Keenan Johnson out of the portal. The, the no, the transfer portal. Is it the, is that the, the real thing? The transfer portal. And I think Jonah Ellis, who had 12 sacks last year. Um, I think Logan Fano, my guy Logan Fano. It's time. And I've talked about this guy and what did he do? He tore his ACL again last year. But Logan Fano. Logan Fano's a double-digit sack guy. Logan Fano can ball. That dude can play. And it's it's now his job, and he's got to produce. Period. End of story. I think, I think they are going to be the best defense in the Big 12, bar none. And I'm talking about Iowa State. I'm looking at you, Ames. <laughs> Damn it. Uh, they're going to be, they're going to be the best defense in, in the Big 12. 
And I think they have the weaponry on offense finally. One loss or undefeated. Anything else is going to be pretty disappointing. Going to be pretty disappointing. And you have, I'm a big believer in momentum in a football season. You have games spread out. You have the Oklahoma State game early. You've got the BYU game late. You've got the Iowa State game late. Those games, you know, Oak State on the road, early momentum, you go into Stillwater and win that game. You beat BYU, the state's lit, you're undefeated. See what I mean? Like the schedule sets up for a reality series. Yeah. Then we find ourselves at AT AT&T Stadium and we're playing this and then we're in the college football playoff and BYU's not and Utah is and this is Big 12 country and we put up billboards and shit and like it's going to be amazing. That's all possible for you. That's all possible for you. Your guy on TikTok, don't f- it up. Yeah. Right? That's all possible for you. Yeah. All right, let's get into the comments section here on the Monty Show, presented by our friends up at Canyons Golf in Park City, the official golf club of the Monty Show, of course, is Canyons Golf. It is going to be hotter than Hades today and tomorrow <laughs> here in Utah. I roll out of the crib at 4, you know, 45, 450 today. Yeah, it's already 71 degrees. What are we doing? Like, what are we doing? Dude, I, I don't know. Um, you know, and again, this isn't said, Phoenix. What are we doing? This isn't you what know, are we like, doing? This isn't this isn't, you know, South America hot, but a hundred degrees in Salt Lake is hot, dude. Um it's cooking. The forecast 99 today, 101 tomorrow, um, 94 on um, Friday, and then it cools off. But you know the great thing about Canyons Golf in Park City? Uh the high today is 88. Saturday, it'll be 79. Sunday, it'll be 80 degrees, and I will be there basking in the awesome draw off the driver. It's going to be amazing. Uh, I love Canyons Golf. It is resort-style golf in the mountains of Park City. It is cooler than in the valley, and you know the best part about it is you can get tee times fairly priced, which is becoming a challenge here in Utah. You want a tee time? Do you guys understand that you can play Canyons Golf for the exact same price that you pay Mountain Dell at the bottom of the of the canyon. And Mountain Dell is, you're playing on concrete. At Canyons Golf, you get lush fairways. You get beautiful greens. The, the cuffs, the collars, the rough. It's a playable course. Now, you got to drive the ball well, and you got to putt well, but that's every golf course, yeah, right? Yeah, I, I mean, I would say that the, the views you get at Canyons oh. are superior. And furthermore, I would also say, that the customer service you get, the the experience they provide you is superior. The, like I'm talking about everything from the quality of the cart to the person that that walks up the stairs, grabs your bag, loads your cart up for you. Like that's right, all of that. And and I, I just I always tell people it, it's not a hey Mountain Dell sucks, it's terrible, never play there thing. It's more like why would you play? the uh, the inferior course when you can play one of the best courses we play regularly in Utah for the same price. And you know what I, what I think is amazing you're you're paying you're paying $1700 for Salt Lake City Golf Pass. Mm-hmm. And you can't play morning weekend golf on the Salt Lake City Golf Pass. You can't book a tee time as a pass holder in Salt Lake City until two o'clock in the afternoon. At Canyons Golf, you you have open availability to book. You get that great service, and you get resort style golf now, at municipal prices. I love it. How hot did you say it was going to be today? Ninety nine. So two p.m. tea time, right? No, no, we're not doing that. We're no, but you can that. go play at Canyons Golf. That's right. Hook it up, In Canyons Golf. And you know the best part about being a pass holder at Canyons Golf, which both of us are. Um, they have member tournaments every month. They have member events. I, I mean, it's just everything you want. Canyons Golf, the official golf club of the Monty program.